Yeah, I chose this topic because I was hoping that the, um, that by choosing it, I would be forced to think of something really brilliant um, <laughs> in like the, a method for integrating semantics and empirical language data. And um, I, I wouldn't say that I came up with anything super brilliant, but uh, I want to share the work, you know, my thoughts on it, uh, such as they are. So uh, there are a couple of types of you know chatbot strategies that I have noted. Um, one is what I call pure empiricism, and uh, basically they're clever mappings of, of inputs to outputs. Some are, are broad pattern-based things, kind of like uh, the Eliza that we're all um, such fans of, and uh, some are sort of re recapture type. Uh, I, I call them that. Um, I'm sure some of you are familiar with reCAPTCHA. They're those little pictures that before you create a new user account and something, you have to decipher the pictures. Well, reCAPTCHA is a specific company that makes these, and their strategy is actually pretty clever. They have one. They they, they show you two um, garbled words, and um, one has already been classified. And they use that for determining whether or not you're uh, a human or a, just a bot. Um, and then the other word hasn't been classified yet. So they're actually um, sort of using you for this, uh, for this classification ability that no machine vision system can uh, decipher. But uh, so their chatbots that work the same way, you know, they, they have some the string that they give you, and then you give a human response, and by giving a human response, you're sort of providing the chatbot with information about how to respond to the previous string. Um, and it, it's a, a very clever uh, solution. A lot of people have sort of disdain for the solution, but uh, I really think it's it's uh, not too shabby, uh, as they say. And but, but I think we can probably all agree that it's a local maxima. It's hovering around this circle here, uh, where this top point would be a real uh, general AI chatbot. Uh, uh, the other method I've noticed is, is pure semantics. And um, for the most part, the strategy has crashed and burned. Um, there are too many examples. One is uh, the Psych project. Um, there have been a couple of other sort of prologue based um, approaches to the problem. Uh, the reasons why it's failed are not completely clear. One of them might be the uh, high cost of adding information. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we pick up as humans that we're expected to know, um, and Teaching that to a computer is much harder than teaching it to a human for obvious reasons. Um, and the, the, for the most part, you've had to, people have had to develop specialized languages for inputting that kind of information. So this is an example of uh, a psych uh, uh, statement. And all, it, what it's saying is, is actually quite a lot in a concise amount of space. It says, for every member of the phylum Chordata, there exists a female animal, which is its biological mother. And you can kind of see how that might be decoded uh, that way. But it's, uh, it's a little obscure. And you have to teach, you have to train people to input these kind of statements, which uh, is expensive. So. Uh, PsychCorp is still working on that, and they're government funded, so they have tons of money. Uh, but they still haven't had very uh, much success. So, this middle way that uh, I think is worth exploring is the simultaneous syntax and semantics. And when I use syntax, I really mean pragmatics, but um, just because it's similar enough on a common sense level, I'm just going to use the word syntax. Uh, so the way humans learn language is both at the same time. So the simplest thing, like when you're teaching someone a language, is you make it, it, it obvious what object you're talking about, and then you attach a referent to it. So phone, phone. Uh, so 
So you're simultaneously learning, you know, what this object is and what it's called. Um, and I think that's uh, worth trying to do in the chatbots arena. So um, in Wolfram Alpha, uh, we've done some of that. There's a, there is a real entanglement between uh, the data that underlies um, the computations that we do and uh, the, the parser, the, the way that we figure out what we want to ask. Um, so here are some examples. What is the third largest, oops, what's the third largest country in Europe by area? So, you can see that Spain is highlighted here. It might not be so obvious. But number three, Spain, with uh, 194,897 square miles. But uh, that's, that's continental Europe. And you can also include Russia and Turkey, or just Russia, in the in the European mix, and then obviously um, Spain gets bumped down to fourth and fifth. Uh, let's see if I can switch back. Not easy. So, um, another cool part of Wolfram Alpha is we have. Uh, this disambiguation. So when you're parsing, parsing computer languages, you design them so that they have zero ambiguity, but of course, natural languages are so convenient. So, for example, things like the sun uh, can be interpreted as an astronomical object, a weekday, a financial entity, a surname, or a word. Yes, I haven't looked at that. So it's 2,228th in the United States. Ah, yes. So it's mostly Asian Americans. And... Uh, yeah, we don't have to do such a job. I think you've got the windows open. Oh, well, just the two, I think. Okay, so the, the last thing is, is jargon. So um, there's, just from context, you can figure out what, in this case, what uh, I, A, and R refer to. Um, you know, you, I'm sure you're all familiar with Ohm's Law. So, but by, by itself, this is a, a seemingly ambiguous thing. So you, it's clear that you know, it's not parsing I by itself as current in every case, or A as amperes. Um, I'll skip that example because it's, you know, it takes much time. Um, so, something that I've been working on in the last couple of months is, is Proglish. Uh, it's programming in English. Um, the design goals are that it has a full ontology, it has parsing inference, and uh, it has it, the, the nice quality, from my perspective, of um, making programming feeling, feel like te teaching a child. So how it works is uh, there are a handful of sentence structures that I've hard-coded in that um, correspond to specific graph operations. So, like adding a node, adding an edge, deleting an edge, you know, and they have there are various node types and edge types. So, the node types are uh, things, properties, uh, numerics, and reference. But don't worry about numerics and reference. Just pretend they're just things and properties. Um, so, an example of sentence might be: Thing one has property one equal to thing two. Um, and that's one of those basic hard-coded sentences I put in. Um, and you can do it in the past tense as well. 